Predatory narcissists work together. This may sound like something out of a sick horror movie, but this is exactly how it takes place in real life. Narcissists will often work together with their family members or friends to trap you into an abusive situation. They will introduce you to their family members or friends, and at first everything seems normal, they seem friendly, they seem to like you, but over time red flags will begin to reveal themselves. You start to see that this personality or attitude they were displaying to you was completely fake. It's not really what they were about. They just use this to mirror you or appeal to your own ideals. This was designed to lure you into an abusive environment. We often overlook the red flags and want to see them as good people. We don't want to assume that they are trying to objectify us and use us for an abusive purpose. We especially don't want to think that this was all premeditated. But that's the sick thing about this. It was premeditated. When the narcissist introduced you to their family members or friends, they already knew exactly what was going to happen. They knew what they were going to do to you, what they were going to use you for. They knew the effects that this was going to have on your psychological, emotional and even physical health. They were well aware of all of this from the first time they met you. The family members and friends knew exactly what to do, exactly how to play their part or their role. The fact that the family members or friends knew exactly what to do in this abusive situation should tell you that they have done this before. They already knew exactly what was going to happen. They have seen this type of situation play out before. So naturally they already know what is going to come out of it. You are being groomed into being with a narcissist. You are being prepared or trained for a particular purpose or activity. An abusive purpose. The family members or the friend's job in this situation was to manipulate you or coerce you into experiencing this kind of a behavior or environment. This was the practice of forcing you to act in an involuntary manner by use of threats or force, involving various types of forceful actions that violate your free will to induce a desired response. They are basically using your body, mind and soul as an object or a tool to extract whatever reaction or energy they desire from you in that moment. And this is going against your free will. You don't realize at first that you are being involved or being used for this type of purpose. But that's exactly what is going on. And the family members or friends are fully aware of it. They already know what your purpose is in this relationship. They know what you are going to be used for. But they won't even mention anything that has happened prior to this experience. They will make it seem as though it's just here and now. Nothing has ever happened prior to this. And that's just how dysfunctionality operates in these types of environments. It has to be denied or ignored for it to exist. This functionality cannot exist in an, an environment where there is acknowledgement or responsibility and accountability. These types of people live in denial. They live in ignorance. That's how their dysfunctionality manages to survive for such long periods of time and nothing ever gets resolved.
when their abusive or manipulative nature is finally revealed to you, they will make you believe that this is just out of character for them. It's not what they normally do. They will even gaslight you and make you think that something is wrong with you or you are going crazy. They will even make you, they will even blame you for their own dysfunctional behaviors as though it's something you have caused. And this is why they can never bring up the past. They can never bring up situations with other people. Because then you would see that this is in their character. This is their true personality. This is something they have been doing their entire lives with many other people before you. It may not have taken place in the exact same way, but you can be sure that it did take place in a different form. And this is something that they have practiced and perfected over time, up until now, where you see the complete result of years of predatory and abusive behavior. This isn't something they just magically learned upon meeting you. This is something they have been doing their entire lives with many other individuals, just in different forms. And they have learned how to adapt or adjust their behavior to tailor make the abuse and target spe 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 specific people. The family members or friends will create a false sense of acceptance as though you are welcome there. They will talk to you, compliment you, they might even buy you stuff. And while this is what you are seeing on the surface from them, under the radar they are doing all kinds of covert manipulation tactics to gradually destroy your self-worth and self-esteem. You may not ca catch on to this at first due to the false sense of acceptance. It may create cognitive dissonance, two conflicting beliefs within your mind. On the surface, it seems as though they are loving and caring people, but then covertly, they are putting you down or giving you back backhanded compliments. Making you feel as though you are not good enough or something is wrong with you. That's when you begin to realize that these people are not who they say they are. What they are saying they are about they are not really about that at all. You may decide to confront the family members or friends and that's when you will start to see another side of them. You will start to see who they really are. And then it becomes clear that they were working together all along. They worked together in the beginning to groom you into becoming this source of supply for them. Then they extracted as much as they could out of you before you caught on and confronted them, confronted them about it. And then when you finally confront them, they are working together to gaslight you or blame you for whatever it is that you are confronting them about. This is when the dysfunctionality moves from covert to overt. This is when you realize that you are the only normal person in this environment. You are the only person who actually meant what they said from the beginning. The only person who was actually about any of that. But all along, they made you believe that that's what they're about. While covertly displaying that it was you who was different or wrong. The entire time you were witnessing this false display of authenticity without ever looking at yourself and realizing that you were exactly what they were pretending to be. But they made you believe that they were about that. 
and they even made their attempts at targeting your self-worth and self-esteem. It's because they already knew that they were not real or, or authentic. They already knew that they were not truthful about anything they said. But they looked at you and they could see that you were really about that. You were genuine. And by the end of it, you realized that you were the only genuine, authentic person in that situation. So naturally, they felt compelled to target your self-worth and self-esteem. All of these great qualities which you possessed were a threat to their false selves. It triggered the family members or friends to reflect on themselves and their own faults, mistakes, flaws or imperfections. And this is why they felt so compelled to target your self-worth and self-esteem. They have an inferiority complex. They knew what was going to happen right from the first meeting. They knew what the plan was. They knew that they were going to completely dissect you apart. They knew that they were going to use covert manipulation tactics to target your self-worth and self-esteem. They knew that they were going to erase you, recreate you to their liking, and then blame you for their own creation. This was the plan all along. You were not just the narcissist source of supply. You were also the family members or friend source of supply too. And they were all taking turns to use you to extract their narcissistic, narcissistic supply. And as sick as it sounds, they enjoy it. It's a source of entertainment. They knew exactly what they were going to do. They weren't thinking much about the consequences. But right from the first meeting, they knew exactly what they were going to use you for. And although they completely ob objectified you and used you as a source for their own satisfaction, they understand that you are a living, breathing human being. They understand that you have feelings and that there were real consequences real effects to your psychological, emotional and even physical health from what they were doing to you. It wouldn't be much fun if they didn't fully understand that you were a living, breathing human with real emotions. That's what gives them that sadistic kick which makes them feel alive. It's knowing that you are feeling. You are experiencing everything that they are saying. Everything that they are doing to you. Without that, there would be no narcissistic supply. But although they understand that you are a living, breathing human, they see you as an object. Because in their minds, you are designed to serve them. You are there for them to extract attention, validation, approval and admiration whenever they desire. You are there to give them a sense of power and control over you and the situation. You are there for them to hurt and destroy, just to make them feel alive. Whatever you have, Whatever you do, whatever you feel, it reflects on their perception of what they have, do or feel. If you have high self-esteem or, or self-worth, it reflects on their perception of their self-esteem or, or self-worth. So they will give you put-downs or 
backhanded compliments to target that. If you are doing something which you enjoy and it is providing you with satisfaction or fulfillment, it is going to affect their level of satisfaction or fulfillment. If you feel positive emotions, you feel happy or joyful, it is going to make them feel miserable. This is why everything they do revolves around creating the illusion as though they have more than you or what you have isn't any good. They will also sabotage or prevent you from achieving or obtaining. They will trick you into giving it to them, take it away or withhold it from you. If you are doing something productive or meaningful, they will try to compete with you in that or try to get you to believe that what you are doing isn't that great. If you are feeling good about something, they will try to target your emotions to change how you feel. Or whatever you are feeling good towards, they will try to change your perception of it. The reason for all of this is because whatever you have, whatever you do, whatever you feel, reflects on their perception of what they have, do or feel. Everything is externally validated with them. And this is another reason why they can never be satisfied or fulfilled with anything in their lives. This is why they can never sustain their sense of happiness. Because no matter what they have, do or feel, as soon as someone comes along with some, something else, even if it isn't as good as what they have, they automatically fall into this feeling of lack. They cannot get the same fulfillment. And this is why they plot so much to destroy you and bring you down. They cannot be content or sustain the same level of happiness as you can. This is why the family members or friends will play the role to break you down and try to lower your contentment or happiness. It's a form of entertainment for them because whatever you have, whatever you are currently experiencing, whatever you are feeling, it reflects on what they have, it reflects on what they are currently experiencing or feeling. And this is why it becomes so entertaining for them, even an, an addiction. It's the only thing that makes them feel alive. You can try to confront them. You can try to resolve the situation, but it's not going to go anywhere. You may confront a certain person of the family members or friends was once very kind or accepting of you in the beginning, not realizing that was a false personality too. And you are expecting this person to be a mediator. You are expecting them to make an attempt to resolve the conflict, which you are experiencing from the other family members or friends, in the hopes that you can, you can then return to some form of formal politeness and courtesy in behavior or speech. But this never actually happens because they are all working together. They all know exactly what they are doing. They all know the effects that this is having on you. But their pathologically, their pathological envy and jealousy overrides any feeling of empathy they would otherwise have for you. Nothing will ever be resolved with them. Dysfunctional, pathologically envious and jealous people will always stick together. They bond over their pathological envy and jealousy towards you. They all share the same perspective of you and how they see you as this high, content and, and happy person. 
They all share the same motive of taking away your contentment or happiness and then destroying you. They are not going to accept responsibility or accountability for anything that they have done. They are emotionally immature. They don't self-reflect or look within themselves. They project their negative emotions onto you. They shift the blame onto you. If you try to confront them, they will only gaslight you into thinking that there is something wrong with you or you are going crazy. The person who may, may have been welcoming or friendly towards you in the beginning is no different to them. If they didn't choose to, to separate themselves from these dysfunctional people, they are exactly the same. They enjoy dysfunctionality. They thrive in these types of environments. All along they knew what was going to happen. They knew what they were going to do to you and they knew the effects that this was going to have on you. No one ever steps in because their dysfunctionality and bond over their pathological envy and jealousy towards you always sticks together. The best thing you can do in these types of environments is to cut them all off. Do not interact with any of them ever again. No matter how welcoming or kind they may have been in the beginning, if they were functional, healthy people, they would not stick around for long periods of time in those dysfunctional environments. Functional, healthy people cannot survive in dysfunctional environments for long periods of time. It makes them sick. These types of environments are not designed for functional, healthy people. And they know this. They naturally know the effects that this was going to have on you. Because that was why they targeted you in the beginning. They do not target careless, dysfunctional people because they know that they thrive in these types of environments. Also, they would likely bond with this kind of person over their pathological envy and jealousy for someone else. If you are an emotionally healthy person, you are not going to be able to bond with any of these people in this environment. In some cases, you may find a scapegoat child who is going to have a similar personality and experience to you. But be aware, if you interact with them, they will then use this against you. They will try to separate you so that you can no longer be in contact with each other. They will then target you separately. Narcissists know the consequences of putting two scapegoat children in the same environment. They understand that they might interact and realize what the narcissists are trying to do to them. So if you try to interact with the scapegoat child or if the scapegoat child tries to interact with you, you can be sure that you will be separated at some point. Because they might be the only person in that environment who will ever understand where you are coming from. For them to sustain the abuse and make you believe that you are crazy or something is wrong with you, they cannot allow you to interact with someone of the same kind or someone who could potentially be of the same kind if they interact with you. In many situations, the scapegoat child will have already realized what they are dealing with and will have already removed themselves from the situation and moved far away. 
Healthy people cannot survive in dysfunctional environments for long periods of time without suffering some form of psychological, emotional or even physical health problems. Just know that they know what they are doing. They knew right from the moment they first met you. There will be no me me mediation or resolution because they actually enjoy it. They thrive in these types of environments. The only thing you can do now is leave. Never contact them again and do not respond to any Hoover attempts. Thank you for watching. I hope this video resonated with you. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. More videos soon.